How to schedule a Jenkins job to run every hour. When you're first starting out with Jenkins, you're probably focused on creating jobs that you're either going to run manually or that are triggered by a webhook. But what happens if you have jobs that need to be scheduled to run at a certain time of day, week, month, or even year? In this video, we're going to take a look at the different ways you can schedule jobs within Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has all of the commands that we're running today and links to any supporting documentation. To get started, let's go ahead and create a very simple pipeline job. So I'm going to call this test pipeline. And just for our example, we're going to use the try sample pipeline hello world. So this is good enough to get started. And I'm going to make one small change, sh echo hello world. So that will be our pipeline to start with. We'll click it, save it. Let's go and do a build now and make sure that this runs. And it's green and that's all we needed. So it's using agent one, which is our agent and echo hello world. So that's where we need to start. But next up, we want to figure out how to do our scheduling. So if we go ahead and click on pipeline syntax and click on declarative directive generator, and then under the sample directive, let's select triggers. And from triggers, what we want to do is select cron, which gives us our build periodically. And if we go ahead and take a look at the help for schedule, what we're going to see is the different options that we have to schedule our job. We can see that it's broken down by minute, hour, day of month, month, and day of week. And this syntax looks very similar to any basic cron that you would see, except there are a couple of things that are specific for Jenkins. So if we wanted to create a schedule for a job to run at midnight every day, what we would want is a zero for the minute, a zero for the hour, and then we'll just say wildcard for all the others. And when we tab out of this field, what we'll see is this would have a last run at midnight UTC, and it's scheduled to run next at midnight UTC. Now you'll also notice that there is a warning here, and it states that you may want to consider spreading load evenly by using H0 instead of 00. And what the H is, is that it stands for hash. And the reason why you might want to use H instead of just the zero is what would happen if you had a lot of jobs scheduled for exactly at midnight. You might be putting a lot of extra load on your controller that you really don't want to do. So in the case of setting H for minute and tabbing out, then we can see here that this would have last run at 1243 UTC and it's scheduled to run at 1243 UTC tomorrow. That way we don't have a race condition of jobs running all at the exact same time on the controller. Also included inside of the scheduling are some aliases. And in fact, there is an alias for midnight. So if I say at midnight and tab out, what we're going to see here is that this would have been scheduled to run at 243. Now you might be saying to yourself, okay, well, 243 isn't midnight. If you were to look at what the alias definition is for midnight, it's actually scheduled for sometime between midnight and through the end of 2 a.m. So in our case, it would be somewhere between 0000 and 0300. If we were to go take a look at the help again for this, we would also see there are aliases for yearly, annually, monthly, weekly, daily, midnight, and even hourly. Now, up to this point, we've been working with UTC, but I actually don't live in UTC. I live in Eastern Time, or also known from an ISO perspective as America slash new underscore York. So how would I set a job up to help me think in my time zone? Well, I can simply just set the time zone equal to my ISO code, America slash new underscore York. And let's go ahead and no schedule. So let's hit the enter key here and let's set it to H zero star star star. And if we tab out, 
What this means is this would have last run Tuesday at 5.43 UTC. So at this point in time, we're in standard time. So I'm five hours behind UTC. So midnight Eastern time is 5 a.m. UTC. Now let's talk about what this video is really about. How do I schedule a job to run every hour? As we've seen, we can either set specific times within an hour, or we can set our job up to say, just let this job run anytime within this hour. In some cases, you may need that minute precision, but in other cases, as long as it runs within the hour, you don't care. So in the case where I want to have my job run every hour at the top of the hour on the zero minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say zero, so that's going to be the minute, and then for every hour, so that's going to be star slash one. So for the hour and the slash one gives me the ability to add in repeating. So for every hour or for every two hours, but in my case, I want every hour. And then I'm going to say star, star, star. And if I hit tab, then what's going to happen here, we can see that it would have run at 2 p.m. coordinated UTC and it's scheduled to run at 3 p.m. coordinated UTC. So at this point, it's going to run right at the top of the hour. But what if I don't really care about the exact top of the hour? Well, what I would do is I would go ahead and change my zero here to an H. And then it's going to randomly pick some time within that hour. In my case, it picks the 43rd minute. So it would have run at 143 UTC. Now it's scheduled to run at 243 UTC. Just so you can see a concrete example, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a job to run every minute. Now we've already seen here how you can schedule it to run every hour. That's what we see right now on the screen. But if we want to run every minute, it's just going to be five asterisks. And then it's going to say, hey, did you really mean every minute when you said that? Because in our case, the answer is yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a declarative directive. So now I have triggers and cron. I'm going to copy that and let's go back over to our job and modify our job to include this cron. So we'll just paste it right here in this nice little section that's already open for us. Cron and that. But when we click save, this job will not be scheduled. And why is that? Well, when we click save, all that does is just save the job. Until the job runs once, the schedule will not take effect. How do I know that? If I go back into configure and take a look at build triggers and look at build periodically, it's unchecked. So until the job runs and the change that occurred within the pipeline is applied, then the cron is not configured. So I'm going to click on save one more time and we're going to click on build now just once. If we take a look at build two, what we see here is echo hello world, that's all good. But if we go take a look at the configuration again, now under build triggers, we see the schedule is set up with what is defined inside of our pipeline. And as we're waiting for this to run, here's test. Oh, and it already ran. Number three ran at 245 in this case. And we can say it said echo hello world. What if the options for schedule do not support the exact scenario that you want? For example, what if you cared about the seconds? Within our scheduling options, the granularity only goes down to a minute. So in that case, you would need to use some other system that has the knowledge of seconds. And then from that system, you could either make a REST API call or use the Jenkins CLI to run the job based on that external job scheduler. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.